Good day to you all. You are welcome to another session on the meta working tools. So, last class we discussed about the meta working, what is meant by meta working, all the occupations that are embedded under the meta working. We discussed about it briefly. And the meta working uh, manufacturing processes is part of what we discuss. And I'll let you know that meta working. Manufacturing are classified into three subtractive manufacturing, additive manufacturing, and uh, formation manufacturing. So, today I'm going to discuss with you about meta working tools because there's no way you will carry out operation in the workshop without making use of the tools. So, the tools that are peculiar to meta working are what we are going to discuss this morning. Let's go. Instructional objective. At the end of this session, students will be able to understand the meta working tools and classifications. They'll be able to understand meta working tools operation and safety precaution to observe during the usage of meta working. These instructional objectives so are what you are going to learn in this uh, session, study session. So introduction, the metal working operation can easily be carried out with appropriate tools and equipment. So before you can do any manufacturing or production operation in the workshop, you must use tools that are meant for metal working. So metal working tools are tools to last for successful metal working operations such as filing, cutting, grinding milling, lathing, and so on and so forth. So the metal working tools are broadly classified into two, hand tools and power tools. Hand tools and power tools, that is the classification of metal working tools. So hand tools, metal working hand tools are mainly powered and controlled solely by the operator's hand. So if you want to make use of hand tools in the workshop, you are the one that will depower it, you are the one that co control it. So they are in your charge fully. So the tools, these tools are classified into five categories. Number one is measuring tools. If you want to take any dimension, length, width, thickness, you want to take the dimension of round shape, you make use of measuring tools. So the measuring tools, we have measuring tape, veneer caliper, gauges, micrometer school gauges, and so on and so forth. So any tools whatsoever that you want to use for measurement, for measuring your object, your material, they are referred to as measuring tools. And number two is marking out tools. So the marking out tools, any shape you want to produce, you have to mark it out from the material that you want to work on. So the tools that in charge of uh, uh, in, in press or mark out the, the, the dimension, the shape on the, ma on the material you want to use for metal working, they are referred to as marking out tools. So example of the marking out tools are tri square, scriber, combination square, and many other more. Even center punch is part of the marking out tools and V blocks. So after the marking out, the one, the next one is a cutting tool. The cutting tool are the tool you use to cut your metals into pieces of any form. So the cutting tools, example of it is saw, chisel, scrapers, file, snips. So all this one are cutting tool. Either you want to cut solid metal, sheet metal, any form of the metals. These are the tool you use to cut them into pieces. And the next one is a driver tools. Driver tools are the tools used to drive in and drive out fasteners. Driving drivers have fasteners. So if you want to couple your <clears throat> project parts together, maybe you want to couple it together with a bolt and nut, you make use of the spanner to drive in, to drive out. If you want to strike your metal or you want to nail something down, you want to use pin to join parts together, you use hammer. And also you want to use screws of different sizes 
to couple your material together, you make use of dry, so driver to drive in and drive out the screw. And also the last one is work holding devices. Work holding devices are the tools used in the workshop to hold your work for you. So the work holding devices, whenever you want to carry out all the operation here, maybe you want to measure your dimension you want to make you want to measure your materials which is a heavier or it's not appropriate to hold it with your hand you use work holding devices to hold your workpiece for you and take the dimension and also want to mark out if it is a material that is heavy or it will not be okay if you want to if you put it on the bar floor or the workbench to take the dimension work holding devices can hold it for you if you want to cut your metal don't hold it with your hand. Hold it with your with the work or the device provided in the workshop. And also, if you want to drive in or drive out <clears throat> anything, you will use the work or the devices. So the work or the devices hold all the work piece you are working with with all the other tools in the workshop. So work or the devices on the workbench. We have a clamp there. We have a vice table vice. All the machines also have their vices. So you are not expected to hold your work with your hand whenever you are working in the workshop. You have to make use of all these tools for successful metal working operation in our workshop. Hand tools. So this is a diagram of the example of the hand tools. This is a measuring tool. You can see gauge here. You see vernier caliper. You see micrometer screw gauge and measuring tape. This is a measuring tools. This one is a, they are marking how tools. So you see the marking, scribing uh, block. Uh, this is a tri square. So all this one here, they are referred to as a marking how tools. This one is a cutting tools. This is a uh, axle. This is a chisel of different edges. Uh, scribe by the, the, the snake is also the cutting tools, whereby this one they are driving tools. You see, wrench, hammer, screwdriver, and spanners. They are driving tools, and this one they are work holding devices. This is a bench vice. This is a G, uh, G clamp. We also have F clamp. So, all the tools you are going to make use in the workshop for. Your successful operation in terms of hand tools, they are, these are their classifications. Power tools. The metal working power tools are type of tool usually powered by other means other than the operator. Usually powered by other means other than the operator's power. So the power tools, the operator are not the one that powers it. So the power tools can be powered electrically, electronically, pneumatically, they can be powered in, by any other means. The, the operator just use, operates it for the successful operation, but the operator are not the one that powers it. They are powered by other means. And also the power tools are powered either by electrical, electron, pneumatically, hydraulically. And the power tools are broadly classified into portable power tools, that is portable the hand head. You use your hand to, to hold it whenever you want to use that as portable power tools, whereby we have stationary power tools. So the stationary power tools, they are referred to as machine tools in metal working. These are portable hand power tools. That the portable power tools are to use in workshop and construction sites, mainly designed to be easily moved from one place to another place. Yes, they are going to be carried about anywhere. An example of power, portable power tools are drilling. This is a drilling machine, portable drilling machine. This one is a grinding, portable grinding machine, and this one is a nibbler. So they are different types for different operation you want to use. They are portable. You can carry them to anywhere you want to make use of them. And Powered either electrically, electronically, pneumatically. So another example of the power tool that we have is a machine tools and also called stationary 
stationary machine to that. Stationary power tools are power-driven machines used to transform solid engineering materials, especially. The tool include sewing, drilling, lathe, grinding, shaping, planing, milling machines, etc. So the machines tools are classified according to this following. So the machine tools are classified according to their purpose. So there are some machines that do general purpose. They are made for general purpose, whereby there are some that specialize design purpose machine. So they are classified according to their accuracy. There are some tools, machine tools that if you want to do the rough work, they are very good in that one. And if you want to do the finish work to the actual dimension, they are available as well. And the machine tools can be classified according, according to their mass and weight. So in terms of the sizes, they are, they are, they are various. So if you have opportunity to the workshop, you see different machines that we have of different sizes. And also the type of cutting tool, the machine tools are classified according to their type of cutting tools. According to their type of cutting tool, there are some machine tools that make use of single point cutters. There are some that make use of multitude cutters. There are some that are making use of uh, abrasive grinding wheel. So the lift machine is making use of lift machine, uh, shipping machine. They are making use of uh, single point cutters, whereby uh, milling machine is uh, milling machines are making use of uh, multitude cutters. An abrasive grinding machine. They are making use of uh, the, the grinding machine, they are making use of an abrasive wheel. Also, finally, the machine tools can be classified according to the type of surface produced. So there are some machine tools that produce the flat surface, whereby we have some that produce cylindrical surface, and also we have some that produce the combination of plane and cylindrical surfaces. So the example of the machine that produces a flat surface is a grinding machine, shaping machine, Cleaning machine. They are the one that produce the clean surfaces. Where, by example, the machine tool that produce the cylindrical surface are lift machines. So the lift machine is very good in producing the cylindrical surfaces. Whereby the milling machine uh, it, it can be used to produce the combination of the plane and the cylindrical surfaces. So the machine tools are classified according to all this. So this example of a stationary machine tool, you can see the assessors. Here is a grinding machine. This one is a drilling machine. This one is a lathe machine. So in our workshop, we have pedestal grinding machine and we have a surface grinding machine there for you to see. And also we also have a drilling machine and we have sensitive drilling machine there. So at the central workshop in engineering, faculty of engineering, they have a uh, pillar drilling machine, sensitive drilling machine, and radio ham drilling machine. And here is a center lit machine of floor type. We also have in our workshop, we have table type lit machine, we have floor type lit machine, and also we have CNC lit machine. Let us talk about the safety precaution to observe when you are using the hand to some of the Number one, always utilize appropriate tools and equipment for the right operation. So all the tools are your friends as well as you make use of them rightly. And also they can be your enemy if you make use of it wrongly. So make use of your tools rightly in order to be productive and free from accidents. Number two, never use faulty tools and equipment during practical activities. You discover that the tool you are using is faulty, kindly notify the the staff in the workshop that the tool is faulty and don't use it again and don't operate any fault equipment and always cut or grind always cut and grind towards the opposite direction to your body or away from a combustible material number four ensure you have perfect gripping and footing whenever you are using any tools and equipment ensure you have perfect gripping and footing whenever you are using any tools and equipment in the workshop. And the next one is that always be vigilant with your positioning and two-handedness whenever you are working at height or in the manhole. 
It's very, very important. Mind you, in the, our workshop, there's no way you can work at the height. There's no way you can work in the macro. So the safety precaution you are going to observe. And the last one is uh, utilize recommend personal protective equipment for the right operation. Utilize recommended personal protective equipment for the right operation. I believe we've discussed about the personal protective equipment under the general safety in the workshop. So you have to make use of the right PPE for the right operation. So in our workshop, in relation to the hand tools, one, the four, two, three, four, five of this one are strictly uh, mandatory in our workshop. So in the workshop, there's no way you will work in the height or in the maho. But for your own knowledge, whenever you work at the site or at your home, kindly observe the right safety precautions that are peculiar to the hand tools. And also some of the power tools safety precautions, whenever you want to make use of the power tools, mind you, the power tools are many, and each one of them have the peculiar safety precaution, whereby also this one are general safety precaution for all the machine tools. Number one, never use electrical power tools such as drill, grinder, and saw in wet condition. In wet condition, in order to, uh, to be free from electrocuted. Yeah, if you are working with, uh, in a wet condition, and you are using the power tools, especially electrical power tools, it can electrocute you. Properly ground all electric power tools before use. Very, very important uh, for the solution. The next one, do not use electric power tools near inflammable liquid or gases. Never do not use electric power tools near inflammable liquids and gases. Inspect all pneumatic holes, lines, and connection before the use of pneumatic power tools. The next one, keep a constant watch on air pressure to stay within specified limits for pneumatic power tools. Keep all equipment in proper working order and use the equipment according to the manufacturer's instructions. Next one, remove chalk keys from drill before use. Remove chalk key before drill, before, from drill before use. And the last one, hold tools firmly and maintain good balance. Hold tools firmly and maintain good balance. So these are the general safety precautions that are peculiar to the power tools. Either portable power tools or non-portable power tools. These are the general safety that are peculiar to them from. Okay, cutting tools. The cutting tools that are for the machine tools, machine tools, cutting tools. Machine tools, cutting tools. So the cutting tool here that we are about to try you is the cutting tools used by machine tools, not the hand tools. Are we together? So in the subtractive manufacturing, cutting tools are used for the machining operations. These tools are classified as single point cutter, multi-tooth cutters, abrasive wool, depending on the machine tools to utilize and surface to generate. So the single point tools are used for cutting, for turning, for shipping, planing machines and similar operation and removing material using one point, <clears throat> one cutting edge, one cutting edge. So multitude tools are used for drilling, milling machines operation. So when you start your practical and the workshop, you are going to save all these tools there uh, for each machine. The abrasive wheel are only used by grinding machines. Only abrasive, only grinding machine use abrasive wheel. So the cutting tools are made from carbon steel, high speed steel, cast cobalt alloy, cemented carbide, ceramic, summit, and diamond, among others. So all your cutting tools must be harder than the material you want to machine. It once again, the cutting tools for the machine tools or power tools. The cutting tools must be harder, must be stronger, must be tougher than the material you want to machine. Because if you don't use the material that is harder, tougher than the material you want to machine, machining will not take place at all. 
never take plain. That is an example of it, your teeth. If you want to crush fish bone or bone of cow, your teeth must be stronger enough to crush it. Your teeth cannot be stronger enough, it's not stronger enough, your teeth will damage. So also the two used to damage if the material you are mashing are stronger, tougher than the cutting tools you want to use. This example of the cutting tools we made mention. So all this one here, they are single point cutters. They are using for lift machine. All the two here, these are different operations of the lift machine and they are cutting tools. So all the tools here that you are seeing here, they are single point cutter. They have one hinge to cut. And uh, this one is a multi-tooth cutter. Is the, uh, the cutter for milli machine. They have multi tooth, they have many tooth to cut so that the lift, ma the milli machine, and the power axle machine they are making use of a uh, multi tooth cutters. Whereby the these abrasive wheel, so abrasive wheel are used by they are used by the grinding machine only. This is a three classification of the uh, cutting tool used by machine tools. Coolant coolant or cutting fluids. So the coolant are cutting fluids that form from the mixture of oil and water. Coolant of different types, uh, the, when you are cutting materials, you are cutting metals, you know, you are using uh, the frictioner as a physicist. The frictioner used to happen when two materials when two bodies are rubbed against each other, there's a frictional effect. Likewise, when you are machining in the workshop, you are cutting metal, the frictional effect bound to occur. And to reduce the frictional effect between the material you are machining and your cutting tool, you are about to use the coolant. That's called co coolant are responsible for the reduction of frictional effect between the cutting tools and workpiece wash away it wash away the chips and swath during machining operation and three they improve the surface finish so these are the three main purpose of the coolant they reduce the frictional effect between the cutting tool and workpiece coolant wash away the chips and swath during machining operation and also to improve the surface finish the coolant are responsible for that so the selection the selection of our appropriate coolant depend on the hardness and microstructure of the metal to be machine. So that is the determinant of the type of coolant you have to select, the, determine the type of coolant you are going to select, the, the hardness of the material and the microstructure of the metal you want to machine. The cutting fluid available for machining today involved straight cutting oil, water emulsifier oil, synthetic fluid, semi-synthetic fluid, and liquid nitrogen. So all these are the type of uh, cutting fluid that are available presently. Tomorrow another one may emerge based on the nature of materials and the hardness of the cutting tool you want to use. This is the table for the coolants and the appropriate application you want to use. The work material, you see turning, the, the, the coolant that appropriate for the turning, irrespective to the material, is for drilling, irrespective to the material type, rimming, threading, milling, irrespective to the, relative to the material, to so want to machine. Study it properly, study it well, know it. And the lubrication and transmission oil, Lubrication and transmission oil. Machine tools, internal and external parts need to be lubricated constantly to prevent parts from corrosion, friction, excess heat, and other environmental conditions. So, when you get to the workshop, you see that majority of the machine tools, the power tools, majority of power tools, they are they contain many parts enclosed with the outer part. So in order to reduce the frictional effect between the, the part of the machine, they need to be lubricated. And also there are some machines as well that use a transmission oil 
for the movement of their parts. So the recommended machine tools lubrication include Dynaplex 21C Semicoat 61, Mobile Factor and Mobile Velocity 3, among others. So all this, all this uh, oil, lubricating oil, they are, they are available. They are recommended for the lubrication of our machine. And also movement of the machine part along the houses is facilitated by transmission oil. So when you get to the workshop, uh, the CNC machine, the milling machine, vertical milling machine that we have in our own workshop, they are using the transmission oil to move their parts. And also the recommended machine to transmission oil include Total Azula, their transmission oil, whereby this one, their lubrication oil. This one, lubrication oil recommended for our machines, and this one is a transmission oil recommended for our machine. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice and blessed day.